my dudes what is happening man this is trent and one of the things that a lot of my day consists of is designing these little vignettes these are just idea sketches and we've got to do a lot of these i mean i did thousands of these for league of legends so my friend approached me he's already a talented artist and he's like hey man how can i improve my concept art portfolio to get more jobs that i want and so i said i gave him a little test i gave him a little challenge i said man how about you cook up this little acorn village you got two hours cook up a acorn village design me a couple of vignettes of little structures where little acorn people would live tiny little acorn people and you only got two hours to do that in. that's your challenge and you know me i love to help people i thought i could just help you and give you feedback or I can help the entire YouTube artist community. So that's why I'm doing this video. I thought maybe there are some tips in here that you can use to punch up your idea sketches in your vignettes. And uh, all right, let's do it, let's jam. So this is what he gave me. And there are a lot of neat little ideas in here. First of all, uh, I love that there's a figure here. So it gives us, it shows us a little bit of the scale of the people that live here. And then you've got, you've got this interesting kind of like a pathway that goes up here. So I can imagine this character, you know, travels up here to, I don't know, like hang his laundry and stuff, story stuff. Um, there are a couple of things going on with the perspective that's a little confusing in this one. And it's a little unclear, like what's this lump? Is that looks kind of like a, kind of like a hairy potato or something. Um, could be a lot of different things. Uh, there's a few things that could be done here to really punch up the, the details, one of which is a little bit more storytelling in, in what's happening here. So for instance, even a simple little indication of like a mailbox can imply so much. The point of doing shots like this is that you get a chance to focus on telling a little bit of a story. You wanna include little things that communicate how the people who live here interact with things. And this is true whether you're doing a sci-fi, you know, facility or whether you're doing a little acorn village. It's like, what do they eat off of? You know, do they collect mail? Do they have rain? Do they have rain gutters? Do they store everything in buckets? Or do they have little empty uh, seed husks and things like that? Maybe they have little shells that they wrap up and they have lids for them and they store things in them. It's the same kind of things that we would need in our world, right? Um, but it's uh, but it's it's got to use things from their world. Their world is a tiny world. So they're going to use thimbles and seeds and buttons and such. If you've already drawn these cool mushrooms in the foreground, you could do things like just silhouette in more mushrooms behind that. You've already defined a little bit of them with a couple of foreground elements. And if they use the same silhouette as they go into the background, I mean, you don't have to render every single one of those mushrooms, you know? There's this thing that I see consistently that a lot of artists do, and that's where if you've got to do something like this little cobblestone pathway or something, you, you kind of lay out exact cobblestones, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're all the same size and they're all the same distance apart. And that's okay, that gets the job done. It's a cobblestone thing, so it works. But what adds a little bit more interest to it is if you vary your sizes of the elements. So even if you have a row of stones, it always looks better if you've got small, medium, and large to varying degrees clustered together. It just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. It's something that's built into the human brain. We just like variety. I try to watch my line weights. If I'm doing something that's like a detail inside of my object and I just need to be descript about it, I use nice thin lines to show like grain on a tree or grass. Also, when I talk about adding detail, I'm not just talking about lots of little lines everywhere. I'm talking about controlled detail, descriptive detail. So for instance, this vine thing here, it just looks like a swoosh, but if you add a little leaf to it, you create, uh, and a little bit more grain, you create at least that communication that this is a, a twig, this is a, a plant life, this is a root or something, and it has little leaves growing off of it. It's not just about having more fidelity and more lines everywhere. It's about having descriptive detail, information in there. Everything in your op in your, your vignette should look clear as to what it is. Some of these things look like, as I said, a hairy potato. Some things look like a weird pattern into the wall, but it needs to be clear. What's grass? What's moss? What's a plant? What's a tree? What's made of wood? What's made of rock? Sketching in little indentations and little chunks of gravel or cracks in a rock can make it look very clear that that's rock. If it's grass, little chunks or tufts of grass blades can make it look very clear that that's a clump of grass. No mistaking it. A plain old black and white grayscale image is fine, and a lot of art directors will be fine with that, but I like to add a gradient map onto it. 
this just gives it a little bit more color, a little bit something more interesting to look at than just your grayscale values. I went through and did another pass to make sure that grain on tree looks like grain from a tree. I added little swooshes and coils to add knots to the tree and just little details to make sure that materials read as the intended materials, not, they're not nebulous. I tend to fill in my shapes with silhouette and then I go in with a highlight value and I pull out the light and I make sure that it's descript. So you get a little bit of that line art sketchy vibe, but that's why my pieces always look a little bit kind of painterly, but not overly done. You still see some of the sketch lines. It's a, it's a intentional choice, but I feel like it's clear enough for a modeler to build off of it while still being interesting in terms of depth and lighting. Also make sure that your shadows are consistent and try to only pick one light source. You know, sometimes with these vignettes, you get carried away and you start adding all kinds of light sources and things. Just make sure that your shadows are consistent from the singular light source. Something else you can do is use selections an awful lot with these vignette shots to add a little bit of value. So I made a selection and then I just used an airbrush tool to dab that real quick. And then I just started doing that all over the place. So I'm adding shadow and depth to the trees, uh, to the top of the roof, uh, pretty much just across the board to make sure that everything's reading clearly. And I'm darkening things as they go into the distance to make sure they look like they're wrapping back into the background. Make sure your perspective is consistent. If you've got something that's out of perspective, make a selection and then uh, hit Command T to transform that selection and skew it until it fits into your perspective. I mean, probably the last thing that I would say is uh, if you've got all these shots and like say you, you designed one of these, you could probably pull off a copy, uh, make it make a duplicate of it and then just paint out an alternate of this one. Like maybe, uh, you know, just change this one. So it's got like this one's got the anchor sticking out of the side or something like that. You can get a lot more mileage out of each iteration so that it's not like something that you're you're doing a whole new little vignette with every idea. You don't have to redraw everything so many times. If the point, if you can identify the point and the intention of each design, you'll also notice it down here. Like I wasn't clear uh, what was going on with some of the writings on the side of this. I think it's an interesting element, but maybe you could do little, um, little benches or something that showcase that maybe this is like a little school center or something and, and, or where, you know, they foresee that they tell the future or something like that. And they write it on the wall or the side of the structure, you know, that kind of a thing. I kept going, I'm going to time lapse a little bit here. I kept going on this and uh, simplified a few things. Simpler is always better. Clear is always better. Remember, if you're doing concept art for something like this, you're going to have to do a lot of these. I mean, quite literally, we will do a sheet with probably eight of these every single day when we're working on an environment thing. And we deliver that to our clients every single day. So these are great practice for you to work out your own designs for whatever game it is that you're designing. Let's say that you you don't know what to do right now. Say that you're, you're a concept artist and you're like, what do I put in my portfolio? Pick a little village from a Zelda game or a Mass Effect game or Anthem or, or some current game that you're playing. Pick a little spot and go, I'm gonna design little vignettes for a little structure. And here's all the little parts that are gonna be in that structure. And here's all the ideas for interface that are gonna be in that little structure. Cut out as a little vignette that can be modeled in 3D because there's a lot of clear information in your little vignette drawing. The storytelling elements are gonna be the things that are gonna really sell the concept and the idea. And again, remember, try to define whatever in one sentence, like, oh, that's the one with the leaf on, on the top, you know? Uh, or, oh, that's the one with the dandelion, you know, uh, and I think that you could go a little bit more creative even with those two generic ideas. So that's what a do, man. That's what concept artists do for environments. Almost every single day is pretty much it. Uh, what you saw me do in this video. And, uh, if you should decide to design your own little acorn person village, uh, please share that with me over on my Twitter. I'd love to see it. Uh, maybe, uh, put it in that discord. Maybe I'll do a little quick paint over or something in a future video. No promises though. No promises. If you like my artwork or you're wondering, well, geez, how do how do concept artists do more advanced kind of illustrations using geometry and all that stuff for you know AAA games? I've just finished up my advanced facility concept art workshop, which teaches you how to use geometry and other stuff like that. I've also got beginner tutorials such as the easy art lessons over there on my Gumroad channel. So you can feel free to swing on over there and pick that up. Don't forget to subscribe as usual. And dudes, until next time, I'll catch y'all. Man, yonder, bon, and ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.